Well guys, I have zero idea who I hate more in this episode. But if I ever do a top three things that I hate about Andy Mac list, they're gonna be on it. What up y'all, it's your girl 30 here, and I know it's been a while since I've actually done a review on Andy Mac. Um, I kind of got a little bit put off for the fact that they actually did put Andy Mac on Mondays now instead of Fridays, and Mondays and Tuesdays are my wrestling days. Pretty much throughout the week, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and Fridays are my wrestling days. But anyway, yeah, I, I kind of got put off, but I know that... Um, this is actually the 16th, which means that uh, the Perfect Day 2.0 is already out. But I will actually do a review on that a little bit later. But this is actually a review on Andy Max Season 2, Episode 14, Better better to Love Than Most. Or Woast. I don't know. Better to Love Than Lost. But it's, they have a W on the end. Anyway, let's start this review. Honestly, guys, it's kind of picked up where we left off. Um, mostly, it picks up where we find out that Buffy could have the potential of moving, but we didn't know exactly. But then she ended up finding out that she was definitely moving. This whole episode was pretty much trying to find a way to actually get Buffy to stay. And it kind of reminded me a lot about a, a lot of um, Lizzie McGuire and things that Lizzie McGuire would do if she would actually want to make sure that Miranda stayed around or if Gordo stayed around, try to find a way to keep him around. So she um, pretty much volunteered Cece's house to keep Buffy, and I I thought it was sweet. I really did. But the my the most touching part of the episode for me definitely was the fact that Buffy chose her mom over her friends. Now, when it comes to Disney, especially Disney live action for the Disney Channel. It's always been about the protagonist and the friends. The friends are more family than the family themselves. But the fact that, you know, I'm kind of happy that they kept with the whole continuity of Buffy being so afraid for her mom. Since her mom is a soldier and she was pretty much in another country, couldn't reach her. The fact that she was still very concerned about her mom and wanted to be... And seeing how her mom was like, you know... I think you are so lucky to have friends like these, but baby, I just got you back and I don't want to lose you. I absolutely thought that that was beautiful. And the fact that Buffy was like, I don't want to lose you either. That touched me right there because you really don't see that that often when it comes to like teenaging. Teenage um, shows, it's mostly about the friends and the parents don't understand. But you can tell we're in a modern era now. And it really did make me happy to see that Buffy chose her mom over her friends. And even though her friends had to accept it, they wanted to make the best of it. Which is going to lead into Perfect Day 2.0, which I will watch a little later. But the flunkies of this episode definitely is Jonah and Amber. Um, I'm going to get into Jonah first. I've not been a fan of Jonah for a while now. We all know that he's pretty much using Andy because of the fact he has panic attacks and he doesn't want to have any more. So he thinks that if he stays with Andy, then everything will be fair and balanced, which I think is kind of wrong. But honestly, uh, Jonah definitely gets an L. And the fact that he kept trying to buy her gifts just to keep her at peace and to keep her calm without really knowing who she is as a person... I'm like, I hope that this ship never takes off. I hope this ship sinks and stays there. Because it's a given that Jonah doesn't know much about Andy and didn't care about Andy that much to even try to put effort into it. He just wants to be there because when things are off kilter, when things are off kilter in Jonah's world, he has a panic attack. Now, I'm not going to say that panic attacks aren't real. I stated that in my last review. But what he is doing to her is just flat out dirty. But what the, the crowning achievement for this episode definitely was the fact that Andy, once again, for maybe the second time, turned Jonah down. You have no idea how happy I was when, <laughs> when she turned down Jonah. And she was like, I know you're trying to make things, I know you're trying to, you're trying your best, but you're making things worse. And the fact that she turned him down and just said that, no, I never said we were back together. I just said, um, and she said she wasn't sure that she wanted, that she wanted them to be together. I thought that was great. Now, Disney doesn't really have a really great track record when it comes to the Disney princesses in the past. But you can tell now, like I said before, we're in a modern era. And seeing how the Andy actually turned Jonah down twice because she wasn't feeling him instead of leading him on, 
really made me happy. And I'm wondering how it's going to be with Walker. It's raining outside. But I'm wondering how it's going to be with Walker. And I can't wait to see the episode when they're together. But like I said, I don't want the ship to take off. I want the ship to drown. Well, not drown, but I want the ship to sink and stay sunk. But that was that was icing on the cake for me to actually see her turn her down, uh, turn um, Jonah down. And it actually shows young girls that it is okay to say no. It's okay if you're not feeling a guy. And even though you liked him at first, but realize you don't like him as much, it's okay to say no. Girl Meets World kind of failed at that, but it's for other reasons. I'm not going to get into that. But other than that, man, I love that part. I really did. And the next <laughs> the next flunky of the episode, I guess, definitely was Amber. <laughs> I did not like Amber that much at all. She's like those type of chicks that are like, oh, well, I don't have any friends and nobody likes me. I wonder why they don't. Maybe it's your stank attitude. I really didn't like her at all. And then also, did everybody forget about Iris, who was her friend? I mean, Iris was friends with Amber. And then she had those two dudes hanging around, and not to mention she's in high school. Why are you hanging around a bunch of preschool, uh, not preschool, <laughs> a bunch of junior high school kids? Seriously. I mean, I know Amber got friends, but then why are they all going to Bex? That's my question. Um, That's Andy's mom. Why are you going to Andy's mom for advice? And funny thing is, I find it kind of funny how Bex really thought that that putting makeup on her face was going to help her out. No, that, no, just her funky attitude, having that change would help her, help her out. And honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing more about Bex. Because it seems like the whole thing with Andy is kind of settled. But then now we got Buffy's about to move and a lot of things changing. And they kind of calmed down the whole um, coming out with Cyrus thing. When Cyrus came out for his um, bar mitzvah, that past episode, they really didn't mention it anymore. I'm wondering whether or not they are down the line. They might do it in season three. But it would be nice to actually see a little bit more about Cyrus in season two. But I don't think they are. I think they kind of capped that whole thing off. And I think it's going to be more about Cyrus in season three. Because after seeing the episode list, the final episode is going to be um, a, walk, uh, a, a walker to remember. I think that's what that's going to be the last episode of season two. And the next episode after this one is going to be a perfect day 2.0. And um, and I think, I can't remember the name of the next one, but I am looking forward to see the other episodes. But other than that, guys, my overall thoughts is this. This was a pretty decent episode. Of course, Jonah gets the L as well as Amber, but it doesn't take away the fact that this show actually did put out a good message for young girls to tell them that it's okay to turn a guy down if you're not feeling them. The same thing with guys. If you're not feeling a girl instead of leading her on, just let her know how, just, just tell her the truth and just leave it at that. Just tell the truth and then just go on with your life. That's pretty much what um, Andy has done. And I really do respect that. I do. And it's not just for girls. Like I said, it's, guys can do that too. But it is an overall message to say, that to give out for young people. But other than that, y'all, that's my overall views. Hopefully that this wasn't so kind of fudged together. But I will actually do a review on Perfect Day 2.0. I'm not sure when I'm going to actually watch it. It just came out this past um, Monday. So I'm pro it's probably going to be way out of date. But other than that, I'm going to do a review on it. But I will talk to you guys later. I am finished here. Peace out.